This episode of The Casual is brought to you in part by Squarespace. For all your website needs, Squarespace delivers it in an all-around package to help you build a beautiful, integrated online presence. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Reggie Casual, and welcome to Unscripted, where we talk fashion, culture, trends, and the industry and give our take on it. But before we get into that, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to stay updated on the latest from The Casual. Today's topic, how luxury killed streetwear which is sure to turn some of your heads. So without further ado, let's get it. Let me just go ahead and save everyone some carpal tunnel before they go nuts on me. Streetwear is still around, you know that. So don't panic yet. Brands are still churning out stuff and some like Japanese label always out of stock and Western ones like Daily Paper are gaining a whole hell of a lot of traction. Hell, even HBO has a show about making a streetwear brand that I refuse to watch because even the trailers are silly to me. But therein lies the problem, right there. People are still buying stuff, but we all be lying to ourselves if we said that everything is still the same. Dare I say, it's getting boring, like way more boring than it used to be like one or two years ago. And we can reel on the many problems that prevail streetwear. Many blame the hype beasts who apparently ruined the culture, or the rich suburbanites who wanted a piece of that inner city cool. I've even heard people blame content creators like YouTubers, TikTokers, Instagram influencers, etc. for exposing street to a mainstream audience. Point is, a lot of finger pointing is going on, but one group is coming out of this relatively unscathed, and that is the luxury fashion industry, which over the last 10 years, yeah, it's been that long, have adopted the streetwear aesthetic wholesale and threw it to the wolves. In a recent article by Business of Fashion, the question was asked, is streetwear still cool? And in the article, it states, there's a reason so many brands are pivoting. After dominating fashion for the better part of the last decade, streetwear is finally falling out of style. It's partly down to the natural ebb and flow of fashion trends. Retailers note that hoodies and sneakers, while still popular, now face competition from loafers and Oxford shirts as the menswear silhouette evolves in a more preppy direction. Men currently make up the majority of streetwear consumers. Further, the story adds, meanwhile, many consumers see pure streetwear brands as becoming overly commercialized and having lost connection with their roots in the 1980s street culture, hip hop, and skateboarding. Streetwear has switched from being what people on the street are wearing as an organic thing to what big corporations are telling them what to wear, said writer Derek Guy. So let's analyze this. The first point, men are starting to wear loafers and Oxford shirts. Well, that's easily explained. Gen Z, the group that every brand is targeting now, is getting older. Hell, the oldest Gen Zer at this point is around 24, maybe 25 years old. These aren't millennials. These are people who are entering into the workforce full force, having an existential crisis over how old they are getting. We told you it was gonna come. We, to we told you it was coming. But more importantly, part two, which I take issue with. The statement, streetwear is falling out of style. You see what the industry does? Coupled with hype and an endless need to be cool, streetwear became a trend. And unfortunately, it became a trend that nobody, unless they were a part of the initial cultures that birthed street fashion or street wear, nobody understood it. You know, the argument that you'll hear out there from some people, most people don't need to know about the culture or history of a style to want to be into it. They just want to look cool. Yeah, you know what the problem with that is? Cool is effing subjective, even in so-called streetwear. You may like Bape, for example, and Homeboy on the other side may like Supreme, and that's fine because those two labels have two completely different viewpoints. And finally, the most important part of this article, the existential problem, as it were. Streetwear has switched from being what people in the street were wearing as an organic thing to what big corporations are telling them what to wear. Well, duh. This was something your boy, Reggie Casual, has been warning all of us about for years now. Seriously, I've said this like several times over. Warning that the industry chose cool over culture and every time someone out there would be like, that's okay because everybody deserves to look cool. Again, cool is subjective, but so many people stood by parroting that corporate line and said, damn the culture, and now look at you. Streetwear's a trend, has no culture. It's just a trend and people are moving on from it. Seriously though, it's a shame because the reality is that 
luxury adoption was the catalyst for all of this. And now nobody knows what to do. Nobody knows what to do with streetwear. But before I go further, before I go further and explain what I mean by that, let's get into word from our sponsor Squarespace because I need a breath. I need to take a breath. So listen to this real quick. You've probably heard that Squarespace is one of the best places to build a website. If you've been here, I know you have. They have award-winning templates, backend analytics, a host of essential integrations, and phenomenal customer service, right? Well, let's go ahead and add to that. Squarespace now gives you the opportunity to build your own email templates, edit your future website on mobile, and now has a video app so you can make your site even more personal for visitors. And you're gonna wanna use all those because Squarespace's new members areas allow you to create communities, monetize, and give back to your most loyal followers and fans. And that's just the surface. By joining up, you can save 10% off of your website by using our link, squarespace.com slash the casual. So get started on that site and use Squarespace today. So let me explain. When luxury started injecting street on the runway, one thing was clear. It was less about categorizing the genre and more about amalgamizing it into a general look. It wasn't about, hey, this is based on skate culture in the late 80s or hip hop in the mid 90s or even grunge in the mid 90s or let's go to Y2K. It was just, hey, let's add oversized hoodie with a logo on it and burp streetwear. We got it. Problem solved. They began saying things like, Hoodies and graphic tees are the staples of street and all the while completely missing the entire point of what streetwear is. Because streetwear wasn't a thing until it was a thing. Meaning, it was culturally organic. What was subculture to a group of kids in LA was different to kids in NYC and geography was only one dynamic. Yeah, punk, hip hop, skate, grunge, sport, etc. All those different subcultures that surrounded the ethos of the genre were thrown into a blender once it hit luxury. And instead of signaling what they were pulling from distinctly, it all became streetwear because it was a buzzword. And in my opinion, no disrespect to the people that like the word, it's a corny cringe inducing buzzword that has relatively no meaning if you're not giving proper credence to the various cultures that make up the genre. Because it's not about the clothes. It's how they are put together by people who were a part of the cultures that inspired streetwear. But unfortunately, for far too many, the buzzword sounds cool. It's street. But I always ask, whenever I'm giving a consultation or whatever I'm asking people who are brand runners the question, what street are you talking about? Where? What street-driven culture are you inspired by? What is it? And you'd be less than surprised to hear that when I ask that question directly, it usually is something to the effect of, you know, street. It's supposed to be cool. And really, translation, it means the image provided by mainstream hip hop. That's basically what streetwear is today. Mainstream hip hop, or anything adjacent to mainstream hip hop has nothing to do with the cultures that birthed streetwear, not skate, not punk, not hip hop, not hip hop as the culture of hip hop, but the mainstream corporatized version of hip hop that's been fed to a public that it says, hey, all of this is the same thing. None of it is separate. It's all one thing and this is who you follow. And that's a problem. Why you may ask? Because cool is subjective but culture is exclusive. And for some reason, being exclusive has become a taboo word for the sake of inclusivity, which is another topic entirely, but I'll go on. It was the various cultures that birthed streetwear's exclusivity that made it a force that ran the show for nearly a decade, but not as culture, as a trend. Luxury just one day said, a logo shirt, hoodies, and hats are streetwear. And last time I checked, those were always around and they're just regular ass clothes. So again, luxury adoption killed the culture and commercialized a standard look that by all accounts is boring and far overdone. You got cats still holding on the skinny jeans just so the full dunk or Jordan one can show. Now there's nothing wrong with that if that's you, but if you did that just because you wanted to be trendy, then the industry hooked you. They hoodwinked you, bamboozled. You've been led astray. Plymouth, Rockland, all that, the whole damn speech. 
Because again, to paraphrase, the industry told you what to wear under the guise of, this is what the people that you follow, the cool people in entertainment or the cool kids wear without giving you a culture except the one that is purely based on clothing. Let me say that again. It is a culture not, as, not based on living, not based on something that's shared, not an activity, just clothes. And we all know how that ends. In one day, out the other. So now people are complaining about trends moving too fast and stuck looking at outdoor wear with the advent of Gorp Core, which has always been around. And, and they're calling that the new streetwear trend. Since when? Since when? This is luxury, calling puffer jackets streetwear. And streetwear, as its culture, paid the ultimate price. It not only lost the culture, it lost its soul, as cliched as that may sound. But that's my take. The views and opinions expressed here are not everybody's, which is the reason why I want you to get involved in this conversation. Do you believe that luxury killed streetwear or is it a little bit more nuanced than that? Or are you kind of like, I kind of agree, I don't agree, or you just absolutely don't agree? I know there's a lot of people out there that stand behind streetwear, but I wanna have a mature conversation about this because I think there are some points maybe that I've missed, or maybe there's something that I'm not seeing that you may see. So let all those thoughts be known in the comments, or you can suggest another topic that you would like for me to talk about. So put all that in there, no matter what, I, I don't care. Just just be cordial, be nice about it. I'm very sensitive, <laughs> not really, do whatever you want. In any case, if you wanna see more videos like this, or if you want extended videos, or if you wanna learn how to build your own brand, or if you just wanna talk fashion, join us on Patreon, on our private Discord, as well as the extra content that is all in there. So yes, Patreon is a great place where you can, you get our monthly webinar as well. We have a webinar where we teach brand tactics and how to start your label, whatever, you know what that is. So join us on Patreon if you're interested in that. But most importantly, keep it locked right here for all of your info on international fashion culture and business from Tokyo. It's your boy and keep it casual. And I will see you guys in a minute.